What's going on YouTube, Hayden back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we will be looking at Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as EOS to Bitcoin. As always, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications. We are doing a giveaway at 5,000. Otherwise, in today's episode, we'll be doing some technical analysis, as well as looking at the potential for why I think that we may hit or still hit $60,000 in in the Bitcoin price. So I did have an article I want to show you guys. I am on the current coin market cap right now. I do want to refresh so that we can get a better kind of overview of how things <clears throat> are trading today. So you can see how the current market cap is 214 billion. So a little bit more than what we saw yesterday. I think about a $2 billion uh, rise in the market cap, a very low 24 hour volume actually at 10.9 billion and a a somewhat lower uh bitcoin dominance at around 51.5 percent we've seen this as high as 53 percent in the past uh week or so so scrolling down to the top 10 cryptos you can see that bitcoin is is doing fairly well uh, another day of consolidation which was uh fairly anticipated at least in my perspective at 6400 only up around 0.19 percent uh, ethereum only up 2.3 at 297 still below 300 dollars uh xrp i know a lot of you guys get mad when i call it ripple i apologize xrp at 2.3 percent and then litecoin is 57.25 up around 1.4 percent so nothing too bad the market does look to be fairly good right now just another day of consolidation trading sideways and we'll look at that uh later on in this episode so moving on to this article posted by uh the crypto uk. Uh, it says why Bitcoin might still hit $60,000 by July of 2019. So I want you guys to just look at this chart right here. I'm just going to zoom in for all you guys. You can pause it, check it out. And I'm going to leave that right there because I'm going to talk about it in one second. Okay. So it says Bitcoin has been trading in a series of rising wedges as can be seen on the monthly chart for Bitcoin above the price reached a target of 1000 in late 2013 and then began to fall during that fall the price broke out of the falling wedge to consolidate before continuing upwards to prepare to enter another falling wedge from late 2015 to until now the price has been preparing to enter another falling wedge Bitcoin is just about to enter another falling wedge before the beginning of September this year. The last time Bitcoin entered this falling wedge, it rose for a period of 34 bars out of a total of 83 bars of the falling wedge. This is a total movement of 40% to reach an all-time high before a correction. If Bitcoin moves in an upcoming falling wedge for a total of 40%, this theoretically would bring the price of Bitcoin to $60,000 by July 1st of 2019, after which we will experience another correction, which will result in breaking the second falling wedge, and Bitcoin will then have to fall to the lowest dotted line on the above chart. As you can see here, this is the line. So, as it says... This means that as time goes by, the aggressive price action will slow down gradually. Bitcoin will continue to go up, but the rate of change of the growth will become slower with time. This is natural to expect considering as the coin market cap Bitcoin grows, these big aggressive movements cannot be sustained. It is also pertinent to note here that a Bitcoin ETF is expected to launch in quarter one of 2019. Bitcoin's next big move to 60,000 will benefit from an ETF in early 2019, but the price will correct as the enthusiasm fades out. So basically buy the rumor, sell the news. Regardless of that, the importance to a Bitcoin ETF cannot be underestimated. There was a lot of excitement back when the CME and CBOE launched Bitcoin futures. However, many crypto enthusiasts did not realize that these contracts were cash set and people did not have to buy Bitcoin to bet on the price going up, nor did they have to sell it. However, if a whale had to make money on the future contracts they owned, they could just dump some Bitcoin on an exchange like Bitfinex or Coinbase to drive the price down. This is why so many have rightly pointed out in the past futures that served as a pump and dump for these big investors in the space. So it's definitely an interesting article. I guess we can finish this up really quick. Very short article, in my opinion. It says the chart above. So right here, I'm just going to show you guys that really quick. On the weekly time frame shows Bitcoin has already broken out of a downtrend, which is what I've been saying in all my videos, and is now all set to begin a new cycle. Very true. While there is no shortage of catalysts that could drive the price back to where it fell from, considering we have had nothing but FUD 
for the last few months, it is important to realize that without an ETF, the price target of 60,000 does not seem likely. So an ETF definitely needs to hit the market. That's what this article is saying, and I do believe that is true. But it also says, however, if history is an indicator, and if history repeats itself, like we have seen in the past, fundamentals have supported technicals. This means that if the charts show potential for a big move, which they do, news and announcements will most likely support that move. While futures had a detrimental effect on the price of Bitcoin, considering they were cash settled, ETF with will have the opposite effect as the transactions will be physically settled. This means if someone has to invest or wants to invest in a Bitcoin ETF, they will have to actually buy Bitcoin, which will decrease the supply in the market, naturally increasing the price. So definitely a good article, definitely something I had to show you guys that hopefully those charts helped you get a better understanding. So do you guys think by July of 2019, we will see a $60,000 Bitcoin? Obviously, if we see Bitcoin go to 60,000, you know, multiply you know 10 times of what it what the current price is right now money will be moved into or trickle down seep into the other altcoins into the other cryptocurrencies so obviously that will make litecoin go up it'll make ethereum it'll make a lot of these other currencies to move up now something to take note of is while the markets are down right now we may see a lot of uh these altcoins fail or their businesses fail because as we flush out the weak hands, some of these currencies, like some of these altcoins, these businesses, these these corporations can't maintain that. And, and they usually fail within the first few months of, of being released because they're so new and things are just are just too new for the for the coin and the company itself. So obviously there's a correction at some point. But um, just a quick recap of the technical analysis. Bitcoin, again, is trading sideways. You can see today's candle. Not much movement, not much volume happening right now. Uh, the RSI on the daily looks quite nice at around 40. So definitely plenty of potential to move up. But another day of consolidation, we see a current resistance at 6,600 6, and a bottom support at around, I'd say, 6,300. So we should hopefully stay in between those ranges until we get enough volume and try to retest its high-low middle moving average. Uh, let's just jump onto the four hour. As you can see where I said 6,300 is a bottom support, you can see how we're kind of trending in between here. Uh, and you can see the $6,600 resistance band at the top. As this four hour high low middle moving average slides in, it will eventually the price will have to retest this high low MMA and we'll see how the price action reacts. It may find some resistance there or it could blast right through it and then start to use it as support. But RSI does look good around 49.50 on the uh, four hour chart for Bitcoin. So things definitely could be heading in a, in a better direction. Um, moving on to Litecoin on the four hour, you can see RSI relative strength index is at a 48. So again, plenty of potential to move upwards. Also plenty of potential on the four hour short term to move down. We have a very, very, very critical support at around 55. And personally, what I think is going to happen in the next couple of days is we're going to consolidate trade sideways basically till we get to the, um, this cross right here where the support level at 55, uh, comes in comes and meets this uh, downtrend, this eight month resistance level that I drew in yellow here. And it's gonna inevitably have some sort of, uh, I guess you could call it battle, or there's gonna be a lot of volume in that in that price level. And we're either going to break bullish because this high low MMA is gonna be coming in too. And we could potentially break out of that head up to 65, or it's going to break bearish and fall to a level of around $50 where the next support level is. If not around, yeah, around $50 to $51 as being its next support. So that's kind of where I'm calling the next uh, few days are going to be just some consolidation. Obviously, I'm still bearish on Litecoin until we can break the eight month downtrend, this yellow candle right here. You can see very similar candle to Bitcoin. Uh, just trading sideways, you can see very low on the uh, RSI at around 35. So plenty, plenty, plenty of room to grow. And I do think it will take advantage of that shortly as the day moves on. Uh, lastly, let's look at Ethereum as the last blue chip cryptocurrency that we like to talk about. So you can see this is actually having a very similar candle to Litecoin and Bitcoin. But it is it is green right now, so we are seeing a price move higher than yesterday. But uh, I think this is a cross or a bottom spinning can uh, a spinning candle or a spinning 
top, I believe it is, uh, for Ethereum, one of the uh, stock terms, you could say. But trading sideways, we're going to see this could be an indicator of a reversal. We could potentially move back up to like 350, retest this uh, downtrend you can see right here. Price, again, is literally just flatlined on the oversold bar. So again, plenty of potential, and I do think Ethereum will rise very soon, at least just a little bit in the short term in the next uh, coming days. Lastly, let's check out EOS. So very similar charts, in my opinion, to what we looked at yesterday, which was Dash. Uh, if you guys did not see that, there will be a link at the end of the video to watch that. But you can see there is this downtrend that's been on the market since April, April 27th. And it's been on us for probably, I'd say, around four months. So a big downtrend. You can see I do have support levels drawn. And uh, you can see we're facing this this downtrend actually right now. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how this price uh battles it out and we'll see if we could stay above you could see the support it's kind of hanging out at right now i can move it a little bit lower if things go correctly it will break out and and try to retest its high low middle moving average probably around this level over here by the time this comes back down uh, if things break bearish we're going to fall to this next level of support at the bottom right here but market looks good for right now. Another day of consolidation, I believe. We may see higher prices tomorrow. We'll have to check in. But otherwise, if you're new to the channel, make sure to press that subscribe button. And if you like the content and you want to see more, make sure to leave a giant thumbs up this way I know. And um, give away at 5K, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.